Welcome to another DCS tutorial and this time we're going to be looking at the advanced precision kill weapon system for both the Harrier and the A-10. APKWS is an add-on to Hydra rockets giving them laser guidance but also extended range. I will be flying the Harrier but almost all of this applies equally to the A-10 with the only real difference is being a slightly reduced range in the A-10 due to its lower kinematic performance. We're going to look at the maximum range at ground level and at altitude, ripple firing, different warheads and how to attack some difficult targets including armour, air defences and finally obscured targets. For those who don't know the basics, then you should first take a look at my tutorial on Laser Mavericks, which covers the basics of how to use a T-Pod, find and laser targets and arm your weapons. And I'll put a link to that in the description. So, let's make a start. The maximum range of APKWS is 45 seconds. That's how long the battery lasts before going dumb. But in terms of distance, that equates to around 8 miles in the Harrier, and you can maybe scrape 7.5 in the A10. To get that range in the Harrier, you need to be at around 20,000 feet and 550 knots true air speed and commence a dive at around 9 miles firing about 5 degrees high of a target so roughly a 10 to 15 degree dive launching no more than 8 miles away. The A10 of course can't attain that speed hence the lower range but you should be able to get up to 390 true or 300 indicated in a shallow dive. I'm now starting a shallow dive to try and accelerate to 550 knots without losing too much altitude. And I'm going to deliberately fire a fraction early at 8.1 miles to show what happens. Now I'm pitching down to 15 degrees. Rifle. I'm now firing the laser after a few seconds of flight. I don't want to find the laser straight away as the rocket will have to pitch down and bleed energy. And we don't want to wait too long either as then it will have to pitch up. So 5 to 10 seconds seems to work well. I had to press pickle at 8.2 miles when the rocket left the rail at 8.1 miles. So this should run out of battery about 2 seconds before hitting and as soon as that happens the rocket will start to roll and it will immediately start to drop short. As predicted we were 100 meters and 2 seconds short but if we'd have hit pickle at 8 miles we'd have definitely got a kill there. So, let's now look at the maximum range at sea level, as things get a little bit trickier. Pull up, pull up. The maximum range at sea level is around 6.5 miles in the Harrier, and a fraction less up, in the A-10. But to get this range, we need up, to approach as fast as we can and pitch up about half a mile early pull up, pull up. to around 10 up, to 12 pull up, pull up, degrees pull up, pull up. but certainly less than 15 degrees. Pull up, pull up. Any less than that and your missile will run out of pull range up, up. and almost certainly hit the ground and any higher and you'll run out of time. It's also important not to fire your laser until at least 10 seconds after launch. Ideally, you should be looking at 15 to 20 seconds. If you laser early, then the rocket will fly low and almost certainly hit the ground or clutter before the target. 
as you'll see in a second the reason is that the rocket seems to always aim a little bit short and pitch up for the last half mile or so so it's important to try and get as much height as you can There is a choice of either high explosive or multi-purpose penetrator warheads and the choice is simple. Don't bother with high explosive, use MPP and MPP only. They do more damage to armour, which is expected, but they also do more damage against troops and soft targets, which shouldn't be the case. Sadly, it's just a limitation of the DCS damage model and I doubt that Eagle Dynamics have much interest in fixing it. Additionally, if you were to carry both, then you can't actually select which type you fire. You simply alternate between the pods. As I just mentioned, you should use MPP warheads and these seem to always take out all soft skin vehicles, IFVs, APCs, artillery and some sites. But a single rocket will not destroy any main battle tank from the T-55 onwards. I can't be certain that I have this 100% accurate, but it seems to be the case that T-72s, T-80s and T-90s are immune to APKWS unless you hit the rear deck area and even then it'll take four rockets for T-72s and five for T-80 and T-90s to get a kill. The T-55 is easier with all of the front armour seemingly immune whilst three hits elsewhere will result in a kill. If you are flying low, then you aren't going to be able to hit the rear deck of a tank. And likewise, if you have a target which is over a small crest or on the far side of a forest or a city, you're not going to be able to hit it unless you either get closer or climb higher, putting you in danger. The method to attack both of these is similar. And whilst we cannot eliminate exposure entirely, we can certainly limit it. Here we're tasked with taking out an early warning radar. We know it's approximate position at the far end of the runway, so we're approaching at treetop height to avoid detection for as long as possible. Once we get to around six and a half miles, we're to pitch up to roughly 10 degrees and fire. The rocket should reach its maximum altitude of around two and a half to three thousand feet after 15 to 20 seconds at which point we'll start to fire our laser this should hopefully give us a clear flight path to the target rifle we're now going to turn hard to at least 45 degrees so we don't get any closer and climb as much as we need to get a clear line of sight for our teapot. Laser on. This range and pitch are what I typically use for most standoff situations. However, they aren't set in stone. You might have to fly closer to the target or you might not be able to break. Or indeed, you might have more than one target to take out, so you should adapt for each situation. And Shack. Attacking a T-72 or newer is very similar, but because you need to hit the rear deck, you might want to climb a little bit higher to give the teapod a clear review of the impact zone. Here I'm going to be climbing up to 6,000 feet 
but you certainly don't need to go so high. You could manage this from 1 to 2,000 feet, but the lower you are, the harder it might be. SA-15s are always a tough nut to crack, but we can do so with APKWS at come low on, level, whilst also keeping outside of the range come of IR on. SAMs and AAA. To do so, we're going to pitch come up on, from just over 6 miles come to on. around 10 degrees come on, come on. and fire 3 rockets. SA-15 will on. intercept at least one, so we want to have some come redundancy. Right. We're now going to try and stop him locking and firing on us by going to ground as fast as we possibly can and without firing the laser. We're now safe, 14 seconds after launch, so we're going to climb back up and try to lock and laser the target. Not only does he probably not have enough time to reacquire and kill us, but he's also going to be trying to defend those rockets. That's one rocket intercepted, and I think the other explosion was probably a self-detonation. But this rocket is now well inside his minimum engagement zone. And Shack. The closest we got to the SA-15 there was over four and a half miles. So safely outside the range of SA-19s, Shilkers, Zoo-23s, etc. And the only time I wouldn't suggest using this method is where the terrain is billiard smooth, making it hard to hide. If there are no medium or long range SAMs, you can actually outrange the SA-15 in the Harrier. It's also possible in the A-10, but its range is a little less, so you'd really need to use the jammer. It's actually possible without the jammer, but it's very, very marginal. Of course, we're going to mimic the maximum launch parameters we looked at earlier, but just to make sure we get a kill, we're going to close to a fraction under eight miles and fire three rockets before breaking for safety. He's fired at 8.3 miles, and with the jammer we could get to about 7 miles, which makes this possible in the A-10. Normally I set SA-15s to only fire at 80% of a maximum range, but even here you can see that I don't have to turn particularly aggressively or drop altitude. If you stay outside of 6 miles at this speed you should have no issues at all. The SA-15 can only fire two missiles at a time, so it can't now engage our rockets. Just the opposite of what happened with the low level attack. But despite that, you should still fire more than one rocket. And Shack. As with rippling all laser guided weapons, the key is separation. With laser JDAMs I use lofting, but with rockets I'm going to use a combination of speed, lofting and azimuth. We will fire every 8 to 9 seconds. The first missile will be long ranged. After that we're going to start slowing down as much as we can and pitching up slightly for the second and third shots after which we'll start lasing and turning off target. As the laser is on, the following missiles will have to turn onto target immediately after launch, bleeding energy. And the more we turn before launch, the more energy they will lose, slowing them down, which is what we need to obtain the separation. We can't simply carry on slowing down as we'll get dangerously slow, and we can't carry on pitching up as the rockets will simply fire over the top of the target before getting a lock. These targets are unrealistically aligned just for the demonstration. 
but you should try and align the aircraft with them as best as you can to limit how much correction each rocket needs to make. And clearly this isn't going to work with dispersed targets. You'll also need to be relatively slow to limit the distance you travel. And I'm going to start at only 230 knots and we'll slow to around 180 which isn't something I'd actually kind of recommend doing normally as if you're engaged you're putting yourself at risk. Rifle then throttle to idle. Rifle again. Rifle and then start lazing. We can't really slow down much more, so we're going to turn just a few degrees from target. The rocket actually has around a 40 degree field of view, so we could go around 20 degrees off bore if we wished. Once the final rocket is fired, then I'm going to turn off target for safety, but also for a clear review. And as soon as we have a hit, we need to hit next waypoint. Then it's just a case of hitting next waypoint after each hit. Now you're probably going to have some misses. So if possible, I would recommend firing an extra rocket or two if you can. That wraps up this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful and if so, please do hit like and subscribe. Meanwhile, I'm going to investigate the fabled low flying capabilities of the Vigan.